On the morning of September 11, 2001, around 20,000 people were arriving for work in the Twin Towers at the World Trade Center in New York. It was 0830 hours, and around the city, 2,000 members of the fire department were just coming on duty. This is a story that began in the summer of last year. For me and my 12,000 brothers in the New York City Fire Department, life was good. And I had my blue little navy pants on. <laughs> yellow stripes. Right down the side. <laughs> Little did we know during the warm, pleasant summer that our lives were soon going to be completely shattered beyond comprehension. Let's go, baby. I'm Mike Pusaferi. I'm a battalion chief in the 27 Battalion in the Fire Department of the City of New York. <laughs> My job is to supervise the men in command operations. A firefighter's job is the best in the world. The excitement, the adrenaline rush, not knowing what's coming around the next corner. The split-second decisions to be made while risking your life to save another's from death. Above all, it's my job to bring my people home safely. That's what it's all about. In June, I was stationed in the 4-5 Battalion in Queens on a temporary assignment. One afternoon, British filmmaker Paul Bereff came to see me. Paul wanted to make a feature film about the work of a New York fire chief. He was soon going to get his movie, but neither Paul nor I could have ever imagined the nightmare that was waiting just around the corner. It started as a lovely morning that Tuesday in September. But at 0846 hours, it all changed. Life as we knew it came to a wrenching stop. I was at my sister Lisa's apartment, helping her get her son Michael ready for school. But Paul was already heading down the east side of New York toward the Blazing Towers. Two hijacked planes had been slammed deliberately into the Twin Towers. Their fuel load of 10,000 gallons ignited immediately. In the towers, which at that time of day housed about 15,000 people, there must have been complete panic. Many were spilling out into the street. This is a US airline, it was a plane, commercial plane coming towards us. I said, it's gonna hit my building, it's gonna hit my building. All of a sudden, it made a left hand turn and a right, and it hit. All of a sudden, the whole downtown area just shook. It just literally, I thought it was an earthquake at, at one point, too, and then you could literally see the whole thing just explode. It was, it was horrible. Within minutes of arrival, a fifth alarm was transmitted for a major incident in a high-rise building. I can 
50 units were arriving on the streets below. On board, the men were thinking this fire would be one hell of a fight. But for many of them, this would be their last alarm. Our communications room was being deluged with calls from desperate people trapped high in the towers. When the wind shifted, firefighters could see at least five floors completely involved in fire. They knew that for those inside, conditions would be dire. As the jet fuel cascaded from floor to floor, burning everything in its path, it grew in volume, fed by oxygen, sucked through the elevator shafts in the center core. The temperature of 2,000 degrees blasted everything that got in its way. Those who survived the initial impact would be incinerated in seconds. 45 minutes into the incident, 1,000 feet below, 500 firefighters have already arrived. Surrounding them are the remains of passengers from Flight 175. Over 100 firefighters had already been given orders and entered the two buildings. On West Street, Assistant Commissioner Steve Gregory had arrived directly below the South Tower with Safety Battalion Chief Arthur Lachiotis. They were setting up a command post. Paul Bereff had joined them with his camera. Everything was going as planned. Units were arriving and being sent to work. For some, these would be their final moments. And then it happened. It was 0955. Over 2,000 people, including 343 of my brothers, had just perished. Commissioner Steve Gregory and Safety Chief Arthur Lachiotis were thrown to the ground and survived. Paul Bereff was injured and later recovered, but some of the others that had been around them were not so lucky. On September 11th, I had been working almost constantly at Ground Zero. It was like being in a daze, and everything had become a blur to me. Day and night, I supervised the men in the search operations, but it was only now, in October, that the realization of what had happened had begun to sink in. It was at Ground Zero that I saw Paul again. Good morning, how you doing? Hey, how's oh, everything? Right, right, right. Glad you're all right. How yeah, are you? yeah, I'm fine. I gotta go over. Our daily job was to search the areas below where the grapplers had removed debris, particularly the new voids that may have contained bodies. We were looking for anything, that is to say anything that would lead to an identity. We were hoping for complete bodies, but that was going to be a rare occasion. Any remnant of a body might help to bring closure to a family or loved one. We were satisfied to find the smallest bone. This is how it's been since day one. 
Oh, it's unbelievable. And this is six weeks later, almost six weeks later. And as we get closer to the center of this, it gets hotter and hotter. It's probably 1,500 degrees. We've had some small windows into um, what we thought was a core at some point, and it looked like a, uh, an oven. You know, it was just roaring inside. And it's just a bright, bright reddish orange color. See that stuff he's pulling out? What was that, Chief? You're gonna hold, we're gonna hold off on the water. See the stuff he's pulling out? Yeah. It's red hot. If we hit it too much steam, you won't be able to see okay. what he's doing. Great. My men were so enthusiastic to find remains that they had to be ordered to take breaks. There's a fellow up in the void, and you know, they don't want to stop searching the voids. So our biggest and the biggest job for the safety chief is keeping the boys in a safe spot. How you doing? How are you? Good, oh, thanks. Safety Chief Arthur Lacayotis was under the South Tower that morning with Steve Gregory when the collapse occurred. He, like all of us that were there, has to keep going back to that place. I don't know which was worse, watching the people jump or knowing what was going to happen. I felt terrible for the poor people that were jumping off of Tower 1 that I saw. But there was nothing we could do to help this feeling. There's just nothing we could do for them. There was just too much fire, and the elevators were all out, so the guys who were trying to get up there had to walk up 80, 90 floors with all the equipment. It just takes time. pretty much surreal. Like you're gonna wake up someday and it's just a bullshit bed dream, but I don't see it's not. It'll take time. <laughs>